almost lunchtime, so I'll try not to hold you back too long. Um, I think it's been really interesting hearing all the very uh, interesting and uh, sort of diverse talks we've had so far. I'm going to sort of kind of do a bit different, really, and it's a bit of a personal, um, I suppose, experience of what we've done in Cambridgeshire um, over all the years and kind of what kind of has worked, what kind of hasn't worked. Um, and, and I like to sort of preface it that while I, I might say some of these things maybe I say come across as a bit negative, I have to say, um, you know, we have, it's not it's the opposite of that. I mean, we've, we've achieved an awful lot through just sheer bloody mindedness, to be honest, if nothing else. Um, I, this is a quote I've been I'm aware of for some time. I think it's Mike Corbishley, but I can't remember exactly, so I can't put his name to that one. But, but I think if we were at the IFA conference, um, I suppose, 20 years ago, I think there wouldn't be a room full of people like there are now. And the sort of, you know, when we're sort of trying to sort of say, well, this is really important, an awful lot of our colleagues would be saying, no, I can't see the point of that. I'm not interested in doing this. Um, you know, can't others do it? Or they're happy, I'm happy for you to do it, but you know what, I'm doing proper archaeology. And I think that it's... In some ways, it's so good that it's, it, 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 that it's changed so much now. When I kind of was asked to do this, and I feel contractually obliged to mention I was so busy doing the Spitfire dig, um, that, um, that uh, I, thought, I thought I'd get David to do this talk, and then he sort of outfoxed me by retiring, which has been quite annoying. Um, but but what, we th what we thought, what I suppose my sort of starting off point was, was that in this sort of newer world, of there's been so much more education, outreach, community archaeology, and this sort of work, Actually, anecdotally for us, possibly, we were seeing I say, a downturn, possibly, in the sort of requests we were getting from schools for talks. And I sort of thought, well, why is that? And what's, the, um, what's that meaning to us? Um, up until December this year, we actually employ three outreach community archaeologists in Oxford Archaeology. So that's quite a lot, actually, I think, you find for a, for a commercial contracting unit. I think that's one of the things I think is, is interesting and different from my experience versus a lot of the speakers today, you're actually, your jobs are paid to go out to do schools and such like. Everything we've ever done or been able to do is if we found funding for it. Yeah, there's no core funding. The, the sort of role of a contracting unit isn't necessarily actually to employ archaeologists to go and speak to schools. Although I, I've always believed that's what we have to do, and I'm sure you all do too. That isn't the, uh, that isn't the, uh, the, 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 the note of it. So, it's sort of, you know, so we've been able to get all this through, through various mechanisms and I'll touch on resources at the end here. David's red boxes, um, uh, we have a colossal amount of resources now produced for schools and education through, as you'll see, all the projects we've sort of produced and developed and they're all sitting and uh, needing to go out to do more actually. So if you're new to Cambridgeshire, you're welcome to borrow them. But it, um, So I think it's important also to come at it from, from the angle, it's also applies to community archaeology as well as, uh, as, well as education outreach, that it, it's the will of individuals and, and the ethos of your organisation, to be honest, I think that, which is why we feel that it sort of works and happens and that actually if individuals go, often things just drop away and that's true as much for community archaeology as I think it is for education and outreach, unless of course your job is simply to work as the outreach officer for a museum. Um, we, in the sort of all the time from in Cambridgeshire, has a very sort of picture of young me dressed as a Celt on his person, but we debated that earlier on today in our own age farm. Um, but it has all just been a question of where there's a rule, there's a way. Um, when I joined Cambridgeshire County Council, which is the precursor to Oxford Archaeology East, um, and this is in 1992. Part of everybody's job description is to work with the public. That was part of every digger, everybody in the organisation, and, and that actually was is, was all the sort of product of the ethos of of, of what had gone on before. Um, and I think that's important. I think that yes, you need money and resources, but you've got to have that commitment of people there to do it. Um, and I think that's something that we've sort of we've seen uh, all there. So I think a top tip, which is not ones we mentioned, is actually establishing traditions and organisations is actually what makes these things happen and will continue to make these things happen when we get challenged with uh, you know, you know, funding problems like you're having over in Devon. You know, unless you've, you know, you've got that sort of, you know, well, do you know what, we've always done this, and we're going to bloody well to find a way to do it. it. It, it evaporates if that person who wants to do that goes. And I think that's something we, we always need to sort of remember. Um, so when I... Um, came to think about this talk here, I sort of thought, do you know what, we're getting less and less requests for talks here. And I did a bit of a, a calculation through our list here. And actually I realized that that was just rubbish and I was talking, 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 talking nonsense. That actually, 
Well, in all the times, this is the, I couldn't, go, I couldn't, I ran out of time and go back to figures before 97, but that actually in all the years that we were doing, this is just work with schools, but this is similarly applied to community projects, that actually um, the vast majority of the reasons and the contact we had with schools was something, was projects we put together and designed. It wasn't that we said, come, we'll give you a talk on archaeology, and then they would, they would come and we would charge them and do that. It was actually that we had to put this effort in, made projects, and that's why we got to, to schools or schools came to us or vice versa. And I had to say, 30,000 pupils over, over almost 20 years, that's quite a good figure actually. I was quite pleased about that actually, I realised that we'd done, we're doing something right, I suppose. Um, and so, looking back on our time in the, from 19, early 1990s onwards, um, in hindsight, um, we had a fantastic support from the local authorities with our service level agreements and worked with um, s small bits of funding from countryside stewardship, county farms estate, and we actually produced, you know, and this is, this is us, a, a commercial contracting unit we were doing this. So this was all just, you know, the hook of my crew. Nobody was sort of saying we should be doing any of this. Um, but it was actually, in hindsight, a sort of halcyon period, and in some ways, we are sort of less well off now than we were in, in 1992, 93, 94, which is a bizarre sort of contrary to the way things now we're all talking. It's oh, it's community archaeology and things are really developing, and so we did quite a lot of stuff here. And um, there was a I mentioned it very early on. Are, are we talking to the latest prime minister? I think one of the things that I realised I've been in Cambridgeshire too long. Uh, one of the members of that tour I'm giving here at Devil's Dyke. Um, went off, became an archaeologist, and came back to work for us. and said, do you remember that Aggie you came with that tour? I said, oh, God, I've been here too long. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but there we go, and, and dressed up in bad costumes. And uh, I think that, that roadshow picture is an interesting one here as well, because at the, at, in the 90s, we thought, can we, we thought we'd try to make it sustainable. Could we actually get enough interest in schools that actually that they would be able to, I suppose, actually pay for things we wanted to give them and make it sustainable? Um, that just wasn't possible, as it turns out, and I think I'll come back to that uh, as well. Um, but we did do other things here, again, with our partners, and I think that's, that's a key thing I'm going to talk about, which is that we had a sat down in the, uh, in, the, in the staff club in Cambridgeshire, the county council, and said, let's build a roundhouse. So we thought, we'll build a roundhouse. So we'd up to Stony Camp and built a roundhouse, and then realised it was far too far away from anywhere, and schools have struggled getting out there for all the time, so we went to Hitchin Country Park and built a village instead. And so, built a, so we actually had that for 10 years, um, doing all sorts of activities and events, uh, sort of national curriculum. Uh, I'm just thinking of things we produced. We produced uh, sessions on history, English, science, uh, sensory packs for, for the for people who couldn't see, for picking up objects, uh, um, st um, st uh, storytelling projects, uh, uh, things for plays, when if you're the artist, people are getting slaughtered by the Romans and all these sorts of stuff, things like that. And, uh, and this was you know, a really successful uh, project for years. And we were, and again, we had small bits of support from the local authority which helped us. And um, schools would come um, to, 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 the, to the site, we were open for sort of four to six weeks a year, and they would be coming. But it just was still never sustainable. And that was something that, uh, that uh, we, uh, we, sort of, we sort of felt, we sort of found in our, in our experiences. Young offenders, special needs groups as well. Um, so we, we ran this project for these years, but eventually the, the, the sort of will and the ability to maintain it basically ended, and therefore the project ended. I have to say, one of the things I think we should do is go back and dig this up as, a, as, a, as, a, as an experimentation about what's left from, a, from an archaeological site, or a, a false one. But our experience at this time was that we were noticing school, you know, school budgets were diminishing, that these were diminishing and disappearing entirely. Um, and basically we said, this isn't going to work, this isn't sustainable. If we're going to do work with schools, we've got to make the projects and do it that way around. That, 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 that model wasn't, wasn't really practical. And so uh, I want, that's various other projects we would do at this point in time. And so just going back here again here, it's interesting sort of between basically 80% of all the work we've ever done with schools has been because we have sat down with our partners and said, right, let's do something, let's make a project happen. It's not been something we can sort of sit back and they're coming to us. Um, and so, the third, the third, I've got this HLF years, from 2005 onwards, we then basically really embraced Heritage Lottery Grants. We've done over 40 in Cambridgeshire in our times. Um, and I think for many years, we were the only people doing it in our area, which is great. Now more people are doing it as well, so that's good, but it's more of a challenge for us getting all the money. But, um, but we had projects, yeah, uh, these ones, just, just a selection of some of the projects we ran. 
And the ones with the asterisks is, because we're an educational charity, we applied directly ourselves to them. So we just actually put the, put the bid in, got it ourselves. And, uh, and so you've got these various projects here, won't go through all of them, but, you know, so discovered Lost Pacific Palace, um, another one of our runners up in the British Archie Awards, not that won it yet, was the bridesmaids. But um, here we had a project here in Wisbeach where we had, I, mean, I could discuss this as well from a community archaeology project, but all the schools would join and every day there'd be, there'd be two schools on site all day long with our dig. And that side, it, it went, so we talked to hundreds of kids, hundreds of school children um, on this project here. Um, we did, we developed lottery funded schemes with Young Roots projects. So we've got ones that we can just drop into uh, village colleges. Um, so these are, these are two of the ones we've done here. Linton and Layers, where the pupils also made a fantastic video of it. Um, and then Monks Down Under at Ramsey Abbey. So again, so these, these sorts of projects with, uh, with sort of some of the slightly older children, which has been quite good. And, and then the other model of work we do here is, if you can um, befriend a very rich private school, well then actually doing, doing archaeology is very straightforward and very, very easy. Um, and we have had some other projects we've done with things like Section 106 agreements and our partnerships with the local authority um, to run some really big schools projects at the Orchard Park, in, which is the new development of north of Cambridge. And, um, and then we get the odd thing here that, that, that doesn't normally come up, where you've got a very rich uh, uh, private school who says we want to do archaeology. And we've run several seasons over at the Beechwood Park School. But that, I think, to be honest, is sort of the exception rather than the rule. Um, and then this is more recently our projects at Fane Road um, in Peterborough, which built on our dig of the villa next door. And then we looked at it and said, well, do you know what? Let's go for lottery grants and go over the fence and dig this site here and then work with all the schools here. That was interesting with this project and also with the Wisbeach one is that you can offer schools totally free experiences, uh, free coaches, everything that they don't all, still always take you up on it. And one of the points I was going to make earlier on, actually, was in all the years we were contacting schools with our education programme, we you do a scattergun approach. And actually, I'm not entirely sure the internet helps anymore because the school gets so many emails. But we always had a target list of teachers, and those are the ones that you'd return to and you target them because they like what you're doing. And that, and that often was three quarters of the bookings. We'd be going back and saying, well, you remember us again? And they go, yes, we'll come back to you again. And keeping that sort of target list of teachers is always a, a kind of a, a key thing for us. Um, and then Jigsaw, which is not actually designed to work with children, but we do do some work with children in schools. Um, but that's been more of a community archaeology project. So our experience in Cambridge. It's a bit one step forward, one step back, I have to say. I mean, we've had a public events programme which we ran for years, which has now died a death because the small amount of local authority funding is gone. And, that, and that, just that little bit was able to trigger things. And at its heyday, we were doing... Um, to over 10,000 people and over 150 events each year um, on the basis of only a few thousand pounds of our support. So it's a real shame that those sort of the pressures to local authorities have been, have been, so, have been, been so problematical. Um, so and that's just a few of those figures. So the way forward, and I think what I've been trying to say here is from our point of view, I think this is true for probably contracting units or, unit or, or, or commercial companies that haven't got their own, uh, you know, that need to bring funding to do their work. What we've found, and I've always found, is basically you need partnerships. Someone talks about partnerships and talks about partner funding. I don't quite mean that. I mean that you're, you're sort of long and deep roots in an area, whether it's with the National Trust, your contact with the County Council, the District Council, the schools. It's, it's those partnerships that allow you to develop projects. And I think that's the, that's the thing, that, that's the top tip I'm going to give for all of you more than anything else, because it's about finding the money. Um, from, from our aspect, to just be able to get into schools. And that basically there's no quick fix to that. That we do school talk, and every single project we do commercially, if it can be done to schools and to the public, we will do it. I mean, that's something we believe in doing. And there's no barrier to that. We did the, um, I mean, I'm not saying, and so this is Oxford Archaeology East experience, I'm not saying this is true of all of Oxford Archaeology, but we did the um, East Kent Access Road um, excavation on, the, on, a, on a road scheme. Now, that is normally traditionally the sort of project where you would say, oh, you can't do education that ridge. We had a community on that project and schools visiting because the client, uh, Kent County Council, said, we, we want it to happen. And so suddenly, all those arguments ago, you can't do it, health and safety, evaporated. So they said, it's got to happen. And sure enough, it can easily happen. So actually, there's no excuse for doing it on a commercial project. It's simply whether your will's there rather than actually taking the easy route out of that. 
Um, if you have your own projects, we, we, we can have innovation and develop things. At the back of commercial projects, it's quite hard to have something new, whereas actually your own projects allows you to do this, and that's what you need to be doing. Um, you need to do that, and I think there's no way around that either. But ultimately, just what I'd like to finish up on here, where my voice goes, is our long-term partnership with uh, working at Hingston Genome Campus in Cambridgeshire has actually produced a, a real, I suppose, fantastic result, really. We're going to do five years' worth of community archaeology with them um, on a project with no lottery grant. Fantastic for a change. Um, but also, we're instigating a schools project with the Hingston Hall, which is going to run for several years in parallel to our community project. And, and we're going to, we've been basically been told, well, you know, STEM, science, education, maths, but basically not because of that, develop something to do with bioarchaeology, osteoarchaeology, um, and we're about to start doing that and come up with something new, a new resources for that. So that's a really exciting opportunity, I have to say, for us, and something that well, hopefully we'll come back and tell you about when, it's, um, when, we've, when we've completed it. Just put this in here because I do have to do that all the time now. To be honest, I can't seem to uh, escape my my, my Spitfire destiny. I, I've done what, five talks in the last four weeks on that subject. To be honest, doesn't need to believe it. But even that project, we did reminiscent projects with the local people, the school children, and this project came out of our partnerships with the Wildlife Trust and the local authorities in that area. And I think that's where I will leave you for this, which is um, this is our dig in God Manchester is. There is no quick fits, but it's a question of just being bloody minded enough and just saying, well, let, let's just do it, get on the side of it. I took this picture by mistake, not realizing that this girl was wearing that Nike t-shirt. But I think it's a, it's a great example of, of really our experience. And at the end of the day, just do it because it works if you put your heart, if you, you put your back into it. Thank you.